Yeah. The we second off. semester in your chemistry class. And a reminder, this is how this is going to continue throughout. This subject is not leaving us. No. All right, so I know this is going to be awkward, but we're going to do the answer key for one the one we did yesterday. So that nomenclature practice sheet two. I will do the answer key for nomenclature practice sheet one in fifth period, so that will be up for you all in your viewing pleasure. Alright, so this is known pressure practice sheet two. FPM there. If you have a question as we go through this, please feel free to stop me and I'll answer your questions as much as I can. Now with that, it does not mean that we can go very slow on this because there's like 39 of them. So, we'll start with this. So, like I said, this is going to be the answer key. I always feel like putting a can instead of key. It's so close. Alright, so in this case, first one, these are dead giveaways for you when you're looking at these. Antimony tribromide. It's a dead giveaway because they got tri in this. Since it's got tri, that means they're naming it based off of covalent bonding rules, which tells me that straight up, it's just spelled out for me. <coughs> they use a prefix here, which means that's the set of rules that they're using. So there should be a prefix here, but because there's not, that means there's one. Because you'll never put mono for the first one, right? So... Antimony, <coughs> SB, trial come last, so bromide comes from bromine, so BR tries three. I wonder why they did call that mono in the bread. No. It's like, mono means mono. So, in this, going to the next one, dinitrogen trioxide. So, the first thing it comes, they're using the prefixes again, there's prefixes. It spells it out for us. So nitrogen is N, di is 2, oxide is O, and tri is 3. Third one looks a little funny. Phosphorus triidide. They got that prefix in there again, so it's being spelled out for us. So phosphorus is first, which is P. There's not a prefix, which means there, it has to be one. Then we have iodide, so I tries three. Number four, we have nitrogen, monoxide. Mono, I mean monoxide, sorry. So monoxide. Prefix. Spelling it out for us again. Nitrogen is N. Monoxide, so oxygen. Mon, so it's one, so I don't put anything. No. If it was just uh, would it be okay if we put nitrogen oxide? Uh, yes, because the second one always receives the prefix. Always. No matter what. Alright. So number five, we have lithium oxide. Now this is where things have changed. Do you see a prefix here? No, sir. So that's telling me it's not a covalent bond. It's ion. So, we have lithium oxide, lithium is Li, which is a metal, and oxide comes from oxygen, which is O, which is a non-metal, which means we're dealing with an ionic bond. So, 
in this, they have fixed charges. I can tell because there's no Roman numeral. What's the charge on lithium? Positive 1. Go to periodic table. Lithium's in the first column. Plus 1. Please, nobody ask me tomorrow before you take the quiz. Mr. Hall, what's one of these columns? What's the charges on them again? Because I'm telling you, I feel like I'm literally just going to get my wife to make me a teacher. But remember, kids, hydrogen is not a metal. It's not a metal. So, what's the charge on oxygen? Two negative. Two negative, because it's in the 16th column. So, we'll cross these over since it's not a one to one. And whenever we do that, we get Li2O. Questions? Awesome. All right, number six. What if it was two and two negative? Then it's a one to one. So you, they <coughs> I'll show you one here in a second with it. Barium nitride. So barium, because we have. No prefixes, which tells me that we are dealing with a ionic bond, so barium nitride was charged on barium. Very nice, two plus. It's charged on nitride, three negative. So we're going to cross those over because it's not a one to one, so BA, three, N, two. And can I stress at this point, yes, it matters. These numbers here, are subscripts. I had some people that wanted to put them as superscript. Okay, you they're subscripts. They Super belong script. down below. Is that just normal? A superscript to say that's normal? No, this is a subscript. Is superscript, superscript. like an exponent? Yes. Um. Subscript down below. If you put them up above, I will mark it wrong. All right, potassium iodide. Yet again, dealing with a ionic bond. So we have potassium, charge on potassium. Plus one, iodide. Negative one. So it's a one to one. In this case, if you cross them, you would still get the same thing. But since it's a one to one, you literally just write the chemical symbols down. Potassium iodide. So K-I. <laughs> if you put four with seven, it's no. Sorry, I understand. Yeah, it's weird like that. Anyways, continue, Mr. Anyway, number eight. <laughs> Nitrogen trichloride. So we got a prefix again. What's that tell us? Covalent bond. So it literally is spelling it out. <laughs> so you have the name of a covalent bond. It spells the chemical formula for you. Don't make it harder than what it is. Nitrogen. There's no prefix with it. What does that mean? So I got one. So N, chloride, Cl, tri, is three. Why can't we just use like Spanish? Like trace chloride. Because this is English. I know. Not very common. But it'd be kind of fun. I'd be like, you know, oxide. <coughs> All right, number nine. We got iron 2 fluoride. The 2 tells you the charge. It does not tell you how many of them there is. If you write Fe with a subscript 2 on this, you're in trouble. Because whenever you look at this, it's iron 2 plus fluoride, which has a negative 1 charge. So that 1 comes down to the, for the iron, that 2 comes down. For the fluoride, so F E F two. Crucially important. Moving to ten, we got copper one oxide. So copper with a plus one charge. Oxide two negative. 
Where did I get the two negative? Sixteenth column mm -hmm. off the periodic table. Cross these over because it's not a one to one. So Cu two O. We hope to see you at Cu. So how did you put the two there? Because the oxygen has a negative two charge. So for, in order for me to even this charge out. The oxygen has a negative two. That's the uh, and there's only one. Uh, well, yeah. Oxygens have a negative two charge. This copper has a plus one charge. For me to even this charge out, I'm gonna have to have another copper. If I don't have another copper, then there's a neg there's a negative charge over here. That's not being took care of. Same thing down here on eleven mercury. Hg two plus and bromide. This comes from bromine. Bromide is a Br negative. It's a negative charge there. They're not in a one to one, so that two comes down for the bromide. That one comes down for the mercury. So Hg Br two. Number 12, it's spelled out for you again. It's got that di and that deca. And those are our prefixes. So, in this case, when we're looking at it, disulfur, so sulfur, S, dies 2, fluoride is F, deca is 10. So, S2, F10. Number 13, have sodium phosphide. This is a real good one. We are looking here, the sodium, Na. Sodium comes from the first column, which means it has plus one charge. Phosphide comes from phosphorus. It's in the 15th column, which means it has a three negative charge. It's not a one to one, so we're going to cross these charges over. So Na3P. Number 14 is a good one, like what I was saying before, as I'd show you one of these. Is there's one on here. That's a one-to-one. -one. When you look at this, it's iron three nitride. So iron with a plus three charge. Nitride with a three negative charge. They're a one-to-one -one ratio. So they'll literally just pair straight up. So F E N. And the reason it does that is because it's a three negative here, a three positive there. It just cancels each other out. Questions? Questions for those of you that are starting to fall asleep that tomorrow when you get on your quiz you're going to wish you were paying attention right now? No? Alright, so 15, it depends where you come from, how you say it. Uh, I'm caught with the British call it Frankian. It's just funny. So we got Frankian, which comes from the first call, so plus one charge. Fluoride comes from 17th column, so negative one charge. It's a one to one, so F, R. Lithium oxide, we did that one up here, but we'll do it again just for good practice. So lithium, plus one charge, oxide, two negative charge. So Li2O. It's just so quiet. I'm not used to that in this class. It's freaking me out. 
Alright, so barium nitride. There's no prefixes, so BA. Barium comes from second column, so it's a two plus charge. Nitride. Nitrogen comes from the 15th column, so three negative. We're going to cross these charges over. BA, 3, N, 2. Number 18, sulfur dibromide. So we got that di there. So that's a prefix, so it's spelling it out for me. Sulfur. No prefix, which means it's one. Then we go to dibromide. Bromide is BR. Di is two. Then we go to number 19. Number 19 is potassium iodide. So nothing, uh, no prefixes, means it's not spelled out for me. So potassium comes from the first column, so Plus, uh, plus one charge, I die, comes from the 17th column, so negative one charge, so potassium, I die, and it's just chi, like it was up here. Yeah. Up above that. There's chi here. Yeah. I have a question for you. Chemical formula for that. Okay. For what? Oxygen. Okay. That's a dye. Why O2? Because it's a dye. 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 It's a Yeah. So my wife, as I was leaving this morning, I said I have to decide how cruel I'm going to be. She told me that I have a heart, that I'm not going to be that cruel to y'all. Don't let her try to do All right. Moving to the back. Oh. Uh, no. To the back. That she. To the left, to the left. Why did he say Why did he say That's number 20. Number 20 is iron 2 fluoride. So Fe at 2. Remember, the 2 tells you the charge. Roman numeral tells the charge. 2 plus fluoride is F. Has a negative 1 charge because it comes from the 17th column. So in this case, Swap them over. Fe, F, two. All right. Going to twenty one. Copper one oxide. So copper one Cu plus one charge because the Roman numeral one. Oxide, two negative charge because it comes from the 16th column, so as two negative. Cross them because it's not a one to one. Cu, two, O. Any questions? Mercury 2 bromide, mercury HG 2, 2 plus bromide BR, contraceptive comps and name one charge. We're going to switch them because it's not a one to one. So HG BR 2.
tried and did not succeed. Correct. What? That room. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine uh, trying to do that? Bob is out for it. It's fun. I'll let you hear it here in a minute. Yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. If you can do it, you're mad talented. All right, 23 is sodium phosphide. So sodium plus one charge. Phosphide comes from phosphorus. Three negative because it's the 15th column. We're going to swap these charges over. Those numbers, so Na3P. Number 24 is like, well, a lot of these are. Literally like a friend. Good practice for that. 24. Iron 3. Fe 3 plus. Nitride is N 3 minus. What's the chemical formula? Fen. Because it's a 1 to 1. Ba two plus because it comes from the second column. Nitride three minus because it comes from the fifteenth column. It's not a one to one, so we cross the charges. Ba three n two twenty eight potassium <clears throat> iodide so Ba plus plus one charge comes from the first column. Iodide I minus comes from the seventeenth column. K-I. Chlorine dioxide spells it out for me with prefixes. So chlorine, C-L. That is not an I. That is a lowercase l. Make sure I stress that so that nobody in here puts that anywhere ever in this class. So C-L. There's nothing which means it's one. Oxide, so O. Dies two. So Cl O two. This is a polyatomic. 
Yeah. Ah, I hate that. What is that going to be on there? Have you learned polytonal? Uh, <laughs> 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 Why do you hate it? I don't hate y'all. I love y'all. I'm scared of you. I don't think this is what preparation looks like. <coughs> but I understand. Gore HCL03 negative. But you're not going to throw the frequencies on us and make us name out the visible light or anything like that. Once you learn it, don't forget it. I'll figure it out. What do you mean, make the visible light? I'm ready to shut up. Say what color it is. Are you going to go right back for us? Have you learned it? I'm dropping out. Like, I'm not out of this class. You learn? Don't out of school. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. Best of luck. There is no getting out of this class now. There is no There's no. <laughs> All right. I got Penta Fluoride. So Penta spells it out for us. So Penta. <clears throat> See, I got to decide whether I'm going to do this to y'all or not. No. Because I've done that for every year. Is it necessary? Yeah, but imagine Mary. Imagine Mary. We are right ahead. there. Right there, just being like. No, Don't do it. That's, that's just, just too yeah, hard. In our defense, we are ahead of your <laughs> So, I'll mess with your wife. Me as a whole. Mess with my wife. It'll be fine. I'll tell her. I'll, 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 I'll mess with her. We're all going to make a group chat and disagree. Mess with her. Mess with your wife. 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 Mess Remember when I told you way in the beginning that everything in this class links together? That that's the reason we came up with the two sayings? I hate those two sayings. Like literally when you do mold conversions, which was like week two and week three of school, it's going to be coming into play in the second semester. But if you didn't learn it then, you're going to be in a lot of trouble later. Right, I did, but I did learn it, but like I got recently. Because you learned it. And I forgot it. So am I supposed to use it like every day? Am I supposed to like do it every day? Like it's not something. Are you supposed to have a master? Like I die. Pizza for I. So I for I die. Here's what I'm going to send you back. Hey. Five for hey, could you pretty please tell me for Hall to take it easy and not completely destroy us on the test tomorrow? Thanks. <laughs> that is hey, a I'm new ideas. To to see see These are back to back, so I down into four I'm not coming up with new ideas to make y'all fail. I'm looking and saying how how simple should this be? <clears throat> so die. Nitrogen trioxide, spell it out for me. So N2 for the dinitrogen trioxide is O3. I think you should just, the test, I think it should be like a worksheet like this in the front. Be like, we're going to do this, and in the back, we're going to. Well, you got to remember, this yeah. This isn't all just nomenclature. You still have stuff from bonds that we covered. Name that bond. Name. James Bond. 33, iron 2, so Fe. Two plus uh, fluoride is F. They're warm, cross them over. So FeF2. You got phosphorus triiodide. Spells it out, prefix tells me that. Phosphorus, there's nothing with it, so it means it's one. Iodide is I tries three.
And then we got nitrogen trichloride. Try to spell it out. So nitrogen trichloride, Cl3. Then we got copper one oxide, so Cu plus one. Oxides, two negative. Cu2O. <coughs> 37. Mercury 2 bromide. So mercury 2, 2 plus bromide, Br negative 1, 17 column, it's white. Cross it over, it's not a 1 to 1. So HgBr2. <coughs> 38. Sodium phosphide. Sodium's in a plus. Phosphor, uh, phosphide comes from phosphorus. 15 columns, 3 negative. Not a 1 to 1, so cross them over. So N A 3 B. Then we have nitrogen monoxide. Nitrogen monoxide. Mon spells it out for me. So nitrogen, no prefix, means it's 1. Monoxide tells me oxygen, and it's mon tells me one, so N-O, <laughs> or no. So, that's what you're looking at on that second sheet there. There's the answer key for you. I will post that later on. With this, I've not decided how mean I want to be. Not mean at all. I really don't want to, honestly. Follow. I am going to point this out for you. I have not decided whether or not I'm going to do this. Subtle differences. In it, <coughs> remember, this is coming. Even if I do not put this on the quiz tomorrow, this, I promise you, is coming. It absolutely will come in this class. If not on this quiz, it would definitely be on the next quiz. You need to learn this stuff. This You finally get the stuff to where your amp starts spending adequate time with it, even outside the classroom. All right. Any questions? What's the question? Will you like to do one of the... first I'll try, and I just can't. Just don't let them sleep. Got a certain one in mind? Bless you. So, number two, on that nomenclature practice sheet one. There's a couple of them. No, it's copper one. Because it's CU2. Uh, Alright, here you go. So this is what you're looking at. Oh, that one. CUO. Okay? This is just because you asked questions about it. So in this, it's CUO. Copper comes from D block. So it's one of the D block dudes. Whenever you look at it, right here's copper. Since it falls in the D block, copper can carry multiple different charges. I want to tell you it's either going to be a copper one or a copper two. In this, the key every time to figuring this out and getting it right, look at the anion. Okay, if you don't remember what the anion is, the anion is the negatively charged one. So that's going to be oxygen. <coughs> the cation will always come first. So in this, we're going to look. Oxygen comes from the 16th column, which means it has what charge? Okay, so a negative 2 charge. Multiply it by however many of those cation, anions there are. Sorry. Multiply the charge of the anion, anion by the number of anions there is. So how many of those oxygens are there? 1 gives me a negative 2. So now this negative 2 is that overall charge coming from those anions. Now the 
Overall charge of the cation has got to be equal to it, but opposite. So it's going to be So it's going You said positive two oxygen. I said copper and then the two say Okay. <laughs> so negative two, so in other words, just change the sign, so we got positive two. Now divide that overall charge by however many of those cations there are. How many cations do you have? One. Which gives you positive two. Now name it. You got the charge of it. So copper, parentheses. I've seen some people not put parentheses around these Roman numerals. If you don't put parentheses around it, you are wrong. So, two. And I want to pause here. If you do not know your Roman numerals, let's say you end up with something like a four, or a five, or a six, please ask me. Don't just like take a shot on it. I'm not quizzing you on whether or not you know your Roman numerals. I'm quizzing you whether or not you can name these things. I'm going to put four as just like... So copper two, <laughs> oxide. Remember on that second part, you take the anion, take the element name, remove the ending, add I-D-E. Okay, does that help? Can I show you how I would write five? No. It would be like one, two, three, four, and then the line through it. Like, <laughs> like, the, like calories. That is not Roman numbers. Would you count it though? If it was six, it would be like B. Uh, no, if it was six, it would be. B and then one. It would be this. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I thought that was four. Yeah, four no, is four. Four. And then yeah. the V is just five. Because this is how things work. Like, it's like what's in the middle? Huh? Uh, yeah. So it looks like we're having more still time. So we can ask you about how to write the run the memory. Absolutely. All right, if you guys have questions, come and ask me.